back. So with the hull mouldings all cleaned up and all the portholes uh, done with the reliefs behind them, we can now glue the two halves together. So what I've done is I put a couple of two mil classic hard steps or locators if you like, and that's just to keep the two hull halves on the same level. Uh, I broke a pin here just with the general handling of it. And I've also roughly marked in where I think pedestals will go. But that's down the track and I'll double check that. So what we need is the bulkheads. So there's three. And I've marked them like middle, uh, stern, and uh, the bow. We need to remember the rudder, so I've cleaned this up ready to fit. I'm going to use a uh, Rebel Contacta. This is the first time I've used this uh, type of glue and it's just to give me a, a really good weld bond. A bit more time to work as well, purely because extra thin will flash off really quick. And if you put the two halves together and use extra thin, it's quite a large joint to go. So first things first, we'll put in the bulkheads and just double check. Yep. And as you can see, the hole sits on the bottom here, so I've just marked the middle. Oops, glue's came out already. It's a good start. And then this one doesn't have uh, a bit at the bottom because of the curve of the hull. So we just need to make sure we put it with this bar in the bottom. Okay. So we'll now just start applying the glue. I'll do that when I come to it. And for the rudder, I'll just keep back a wee bit and we can come back in and use extra thin. Okay, so that's that. Pegs to the bulkheads, the problem. Okay, and this last one. Okay, so I'll just start from the bar, try and get that nice and neat. I'm just lift this up a bit, and we're putting the rudder as well. I've got some glue on the bench and now it's melted the mat onto the thing, but that's okay. There's a lot of cleanup we'll be doing anyway. Okay, the stern needs a bit of work. Because okay. of the angle. It's hard to squeeze it together without pushing it apart. Okay. 
Okay, so that's that's a glued anyway. Bit excess glues came through, but again, we've got a seam to clean up here anyway. Okay, so we'll leave it there to go off. Okay, so it's sat for about 24 hours now, so let's have a look. So the bowl actually looks very neat. It seems to have worked out well. A wee line here, not much there. And then we come farther to the middle of the hole. And what's strange is we still have, I don't know if you can see it, a bit of a step here. Which is surprising because that's why I put these uh, plates in to level at the bottom and it actually feels smooth on the inside. But you still have a step here. So I'm wondering if the hull was slightly thicker on one side, which is a bit strange. And then along the, the keel, it's pretty level and smooth, which is good. And then I managed not to glue the rudder in place. I think the stern's going to need a fair bit of work. Yeah, so you can see it's actually open. And a wee bit of a step here, which isn't too bad. You can actually, I don't know if you can't see or not, I wasn't able to pull that together. So we need some sprue glue in there. So what I'll do, is I'm not going to start sanding here because I feel that the, the seam will show and then I'll need sp sprue glue. So what I'll do is I'll just apply it now, right along, and then I'll only go in and sand it the once and hopefully I don't need to do any more. So the sprue glue was just made out of uh, Tommy and extra thing, chopped up bits of sprue from the actual kit. So the color will match anyway, not that it matters. And then what I'll do is I'm just going to apply it with a toothpick. Once it starts getting a bit stringy, see there's a string there, just uh, just go in there and mix up just to get flowing again. Stops it skinning over and then we'll just keep going. Okay, so I'll just continue with this and then we'll come back. Okay, so my sprue goo seam filling has had a few days to go off now. So we'll start sanding that back. You'll notice all the black marks on the hull. I did make a video on what these are, but I lost the footage, so I'll go over it again. These circles here, I filled them in, not the sink marks that I highlighted in a previous video. But there's a few areas I'll address, and you probably can't see it because of the pen now, but there's a couple of sharp edges here. It's not a smooth transition, so I'll just round them off. And there's a few like ripples in a hull here. You can just feel them, they're very fine, but I'll be all taking them out. And then at the, the stern here, and I think it must be a process of the slide molding or something, but you could feel a faint mold line here and similar here. It's just, just a bit of an edge, so I'll take that off as well. On the keel, this area here is, is a bit rough in the same on the other side. So I'll take them off as well, or sand it up, and then at the rudder. And this is where there's a moulding underneath. You can see that square block. There was a sink mark, quite a deep one in either side. And again, it's, it's already filled with sprue in the same way these. So for removing the seams, we'll just use a selection of sanding sticks, these are homemade ones and then we'll use various skinny sticks and
sandals, some sponge. And just some wet and dry, 400, 600 and 1200. And we'll just use them a little rhyme or reason. We'll just see what fits best. For some of the areas where I've really built up the sprue glue, we'll just use a knife to scrape it down initially anyway, to remove the bulk of it. We're just gonna start with the bow. So that's not the best, because it's such a big gap in there and I kind of overflowed it. I kind of lost track of the actual shape of it. So hopefully this is close enough. But also the center line seems to be off offline. So the side seems to come around just a fraction more because there's the, the seam there, whereas visually it's probably back here somewhere. So there's a strange bit up here to try and blend in. Might be different with paint, but we've got something strange happening here. Got a lump here, whereas it used to be on this side. So I need to try and get this curve here kind of consistent and then hopefully it comes to the proper shape down here. Okay, I think I'll leave it at that. Clean up with the 1200. I don't know if you can see, hopefully, the lines start to appear again, which is good. Well, not good from a filling point of view, but good from a location point of view. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that. It's not the best, but. Let's try to look at it in the light. Obviously, a little dots to fill, but. It's this section here. Just put a bit of a hollow in there now. It's better. Uh, I'll leave it now. This bit inside here to do as well, which is going to be uh, a best. If I just keep the, the blade nice and flat, this should be easy enough. Okay, so I've finished sanding all the, the seam lines uh, and also the sink marks as well. So before I spray on the primer to check the, the seams, what I'm going to do is I'll give everything a, a wet sand with 600 and 1200.
So before I do that, what I'll do is I'm just going to put in some masking tape just to protect the detail side of it. Doesn't have to be a neat masking job. It's just like I said to protect some of the detail from any slips of the sandals. Okay, so I've got a glass of water here. As you can see, I've already done a bit of wet sanding. I'll use the 600 first. Now it's just a case of... I'm going to keep away from this area because I was quite happy the way it turned out. Uh, of course, once we get the primer on, it might look a bit different, but... Having the water is really good because it keeps the dust down, plus it makes the paper a bit less ag aggressive, so... You can get a smoother finish, I believe. So you want to be methodical and just work your way from one end to the other. Don't jump about so you don't miss any areas. And hopefully what we'll do is we'll, this will remove any fine marks or scratches that the holes picked up just in general handling and some of the more aggressive sanding might have left some deeper marks that we need to just find ones. And again, I want to avoid taking too much off the set end here as well. But again, the, the primer might show up some work because I think there is a little pinhole or two. So. And, uh, if you remember, there was a kind of mold line here, so I've already removed that. And I used quite aggressive paper to remove some of the orange peel area that was here. Missed that line with the masking tape because that's the kind of thing I want to protect. Okay, there seems to be like a few, don't know if you can see it, golf ball dimples. There's a few up here as well. These are quite heavy here. Okay, so that's. That's the 600 done. We'll do the same with the uh, 1200. In this case, we're going to take our time, make sure we cover every surface. Okay, so that's as much as I'm going to do now. So, uh, what we'll do is this tape off then then we'll give it a how a good uh, wash under the sink and then we can come back and uh, give it a buff and then we can apply the primer and have a look at the seams okay so that's the sanding finished and I've given it a wash down so the next thing to do is we'll put a coat of primer along the seam and just see how good it is so for this I'm going to use Mr finishing surface of 1500. Now I've used the black before and I really like the 1500. I couldn't get black so I went with the pink instead of the grey because it's a grey hull, grey primer, grey paint. So I'll give the pink a try. So I'll thin that with uh, Mr Hobby leveling thinners and I've just put it into a, a little bottle for, for ease of use. So what I normally mix up my paint and primers is 40% paint to 60% thinner. Okay, so I'll just mix it up in the tattoo ink cup.
so hopefully you can see I'm going to have to fix that first porthole. That's the oversized one that I ground. I filled in the drilled smaller. So as you can see, I need a bit of filler there anyway. Messed that up. It's looking surprisingly uh, good. Got a bit there to do. I'll fix that paint. Uh, this is all good along here. I also did some sink marks. There's one of the Doesn't look too bad as well. I seem to be out of practice with the airbrush and I've got a bit of a red spot again. There's a little bit to fill there on the very peak. Or maybe it's probably not clear. There's one or two little bits inside, a little bit there and there. But that's okay, I'll come back and clean up all the all the bits of uh, priming. And it's winter dry. Okay, so I've set this aside. Do a couple of fills on this end, one at the other end, a couple at the stern, and of course I'll clean up this mess here. And I need to fix that port holder. So since we've got the primer out, we'll take the opportunity to do the prop shafts. I actually filled a hole there, but I forgot to sand the back. Uh, that's okay, I can come back and quickly remove that. So the nice thing we'll have a look at is the bilge keels. Now they're not very clear on the instructions, but trial fitting them, you can see the ends are different. So from what I can tell, the one with the flat section goes to the rear, and I've tried to keep the numbers to match, because uh, there's no real locating marks or locating aids. There is a mark here and it's very faint and it ends here and starts there. So what we'll do, and this will help us, is we'll just put a bit of tape on the end there and at the beginning there. So that gives us an idea of where it has to fit. Now the bilge cues should be perpendicular to the hull. So I think the best way to go about it is to maybe try and fit it temporarily in place and then we can adjust it and tweak it as we go. So what I'll do... Okay, so what we'll do is we'll put it in place as best we can. So you probably can't see, but because it's so thin and wobbly, it keeps moving out of place. But now we've kind of held it roughly in position. We can now just tweak a bit at a time. And we just keep going back and forth, just adjusting it. Okay, so this has moved. Yeah, that looks quite good, except I think it's lying flat this way, so if we'll have a look. It's a little bit wobbly as well, but again, we can just tweak it. And we just keep working it like this. So you get the idea, uh, I'll have to get my head over the top of it to see. But once we kind of get it into position, we'll do the other side. Okay. So let me just fine tune this, and then we'll come back and have a look. So that's more or less in the position I want it now. Uh, what I'm going to do is just use some extra thin and secure up to this point because you might be able to see there's a wee bit of a twist where that comes down but if you 
straighten that up, pops this out. So I'm just going to secure now and just uh, There's very little holding this on. Just come in from the top as well now. Alright, so I've stopped here. Once the glue goes off, I can come back in, just tweak this section here and just straighten it up. Okay, so we'll let that go off. So that's the other bilge kill installed and glued up, or glued between the tip. It's hard to see, but hopefully it should be more or less aligned. So what I'll do next is attach the, the prop shafts. Now, the reason I'm doing it now is uh, we'll need a fair bit of filling on there. So once this is glued, I'll be able to then do the bilge kill because the fit's not that great. It's very minimal contact, so we'll need to put in some kind of filler so we can do this at the same time. The fit against the hull is actually really good. I mean, if I use it extra thin, I'll have no filling to do. Just need to do that little point to make sure it goes down. And then hopefully you can see there, it's making good contact. The edge is like on a curve. So I've seen people build this up and fill this up, but I think leaving it like that and just gluing it with no filler is the way to go for this end part. What I might do is just put some marks on, so I'll move it so I can see, because there's a got a bit of flex in it, so try and leave it to the natural straight line. Again, this one's got a bit of flex as well. Okay, I think that looks pretty straight. So we'll glue them up. I'll do one side and then I'll spin it around and match the other. Okay, we'll leave it at that. So now that the bilge kills have for time to go off, we just need to fill the gap in here where it touches the hull. They've came out not too bad. Still a little gap to fill just based on the shape of the edges. So I'm going to use Mr. Surface 500 and was going to apply it with a brush. But I'm trying to think of ways to minimise cleanup because uh, we'll just do it with a cotton bud and thinner. But what I'll try is, ages ago I, I bought a bag of syringes uh, just to see if I could find a use for them. And I think I have. So what I've done is I've filled up one of the syringes with the Mr. Surfacer 500 and it's got a tiny needle. I don't know what size, 0.25 or something, but we'll give this a try and see how it goes. Okay, so we'll start at one end and we'll see how we go. There we go, it seems to be consistent bead now. We'll let that go off a bit. It's going to sink back anyway, because it is Mr. 500. And it does shrink a fair bit. We could probably just build it up in layers. I'll go and do the rest of them and then we'll come back and see what it looks like and then the clean up. Okay so I made a video cleaning up the Mr. Surfacer uh, in close-up but my hands kept getting in the way so I'll, I'll redo it bearing in mind that these have already been cleaned up. So you need 
or you use Mr. Leveling thinners and dip the cotton buds. Dip the cotton bud in the thinners. And because they are quite wide, I like to pinch them into a point and then just work all the way down through. Bear in mind, this has already been cleaned up, just so you can get the idea. So there's not going to be much that comes off. A wee bit still. So you just keep doing that. Just keep using lots of new uh, cotton buds as well. And then you can do a final wipe. Just to get rid of anything that's moved over to the sides. Then if you've got any of these little sharp, they're quite firm, uh, pointy cotton buds are, you can use this to just go into the corner. I like to give it a bit of a spin just to Okay. So you actually, because you've applied it with the syringe, you're actually removing very little. Hopefully it's focusing, that's what you can, very quick and easy compared to applying it with a brush and then having lots to remove. I don't know what, uh, I might not have mentioned it in the video, but I, I did give it two, two loads of Mr. 500. Okay. So with the bilge keels uh, attached and filled and cleaned up and also the prop shafts, that's all I'm going to do for, for this part four, okay? So thanks for watching.